The class pick is always so interesting. And this is also where I believe Season 3 is so unique, is you have a partner to look at the board while you look at classes. Because you have to look at the stat line, look at the weapons, and then your partner could be like, okay, this is what we can go for while uh, you know you look at classes. What, what kind of classes are there? Oh, these, these classes are there. These weapons are available. Oh, okay, so th we can do this, we can do that. Um, and I think that's like a really cool dynamic as well. Is it's not just reliant on one person. Is you get to share responsibilities and uh, absolutely, yeah. Kind of figure out how to do this together. I think that's like a really cool, uh, unique uh, aspect of of season three. Yeah, and and I feel like uh, one thing that I've seen a lot of teams do is one player is kind of delegated to do, uh, you know, like tasks like sacrificing runes or getting levels. Um, while the other is working on building up squares, right? So it's cool to see that for sure. Um, all right, looks like the players are ready. Let me go ahead. I should be able to start the. Oh, wait. Oh, I was to say stop match. Wait, hold on. Oh, there we go. Start match. There we go. All right, the board should be available. Looks like they are reading it right now. They have three minutes of prep time to look at the classes and look at the board. I don't know, man. So if we're looking at the board here with the viewers, by the way, we have quite a few things. It should be pretty legible. Let me see if I can find a screen that has a little bit of a bigger uh, bingo board. Uh, here we go. That should be a little bit easier for them to see here. Um, a lot of money. Is on this is yeah. board, if I'm being honest. Like, we have Bogart for 20 boiled crabs. That's about $12,000. Uh, then you've got Memory Rune of Grace. That's 50 k You know, you got uh, some some money sinks here, which I think is always great for, for bingo, playing around uh, money sinks. Um, I am uh, already looking here at this row four. This row four looks a little bit juicy. I don't know how fast the Dragonheart bosses are, but yeah. this looks like a pretty quick bingo to set up in the early game we'll see if anyone goes for it i think absolutely we'll see memory of grace that one is very very quick we'll probably yeah. see a rush on that one yeah um i'm also looking at killer remembrance boss daggers claws or fists only that one's pretty popular as well from the practice matches that i've seen um that one could be a rush as well obviously uh godric is you know not the hardest boss ever especially with you know let's say they get like a hook claws or any kind of bleed weapon that's an easy square right there yeah, no, I 100% agree. And uh, for Dragonheart bosses, it's not too bad because uh, you can go for a Gil straight into, like, Magma Worm. That's already two right there. So you can go for, like, Smarag. You can go for um, you can go for the other Magma Worms if you really wanted to. Um, it's, it's decently quick, I would say, for sure. However, when it comes to, like, the way Bingo has been played in Season 2... The quicker a line is, the quicker it is also blocked. You know what I mean? So right. because like it just like it's just too easy of a of a line. So obviously the other team is going to see that line and immediately block it, if not trying to commit for it as well. Um, so I'm expecting one team to go for complete two caves or grottos very early on, and then the other one to either memory of grace or to do the sleeping golem, and uh, just uh, have that row four blocked immediately. Um, but there's a lot of uh, killing for sure on this on this board here. Uh, Godric drew great rune uh, rest restoration. Jesus words uh, is there a really long one here? Is honestly four different remembrances. That one's going to be very interesting. I want to see what the players pick for four different remembrances because yeah, Millennia is available now, and some people have been practicing Millennia a lot to where honestly, if they get a weapon online, this is very accessible. To where they could just do that semi quickly, not like just off the cuff, real quick. But having a grace right outside of our arena is really, really useful. It looks like we are getting into game. We are going to be loading up yes, very, sir. very shortly. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> this is our first match, I guess. Season three is kicking off with a bang. I am very, very excited to watch this match of uh, Team Joe W. Bush versus Team Monkey Baller. Yeah, let's get into it. Interesting team names too. Uh, <laughs> I, I I said they, they they're allowed to just have a team name if they want, and uh, they all came up with their own. Uh, they're a little bit uh, you know different iterations of team names, but at the end, uh, all of them have great ones. 
All of them have very, <laughs> very unique names, and I, I think it's really neat. To, it kind of like showcases the the team's personalities based on their team uh, team name. Yeah. Are we going to see a? I we didn't talk about Millicent. Uh, is Millicent still a uh, high priority square for the early game? Um, somewhat. I mean, but like I've seen people kind of start to ignore that a little bit more. Um, it's definitely still a rushable square, a hundred and ten percent. It's more or less just uh, you know, is it is it worth the time, or can we do a little bit more in that time frame? Um, and as we see here, by the way, you see Bushy already drop down. Everybody else is going for that door to open up, but Bushy here going for two caves or grottos by cl uh, clearing out uh, Soldier of Godric already from the very beginning. Right, yep. Uh, and we believe, I think the next one that that should be on the board will be uh, Beastman of Faramazula, if I remember correctly. That one's like the second fastest from uh, from this position after you exit the Cave of Knowledge. So yeah. Very, very fast square here from Bushy. I believe they will get on the board first. Um, and I guess we'll have a look at what Aggie and CBD have prepared. Um, every single player, by the way, started with the uh, Lord Cern, the Lord Sword Straight Sword starting class. Because of that square off weapon art, it is one of the best in the entire game, if not the best, coming in at a whopping 40 poise damage. So we'll yeah. be seeing some uh, some bosses get annihilated in the early game here. Oh yeah, Square Off is absolutely amazing. Um, it's honestly one of my personal favorites as well. It's it's versatile because it has an R1 and an R2 option um, on top of that, and it just does a lot of damage. To be honest, it's it's really fun to use too. And there it is, Rick. You know, one of the strongest enemies in the game, turned You're to a dust. brave soldier. Yep, <laughs> a good old 07 for for Rick there. Uh, nice to see him at least once this game. Very very nice. And, uh, yeah, as soon as he gets that kill, uh, obviously, Bushy's is going to go straight for uh, Bofa. And here's the thing. This is where, like, having a teammate's nice. Bushy's able to make this play while his teammate goes and does something else. This is, like, this is the, like, cool uniqueness of two uh, 2v2s is that his teammates are allowed to go and prep now while he does, does and just goes and rushes a square. And then they kind of, like, start working off each other and be like, okay, well, you're ahead, a little bit ahead now. You go do a square. I'm going to go prep. All right, I'm ahead now. I'm going to go do a square. You go prep. And just this back and forth kind of dance, which I think is really, really fun. Yeah, this is definitely where synergy is going to come into play because the players that have a lot of time together and a lot of time, uh, you know, experience together with these practice matches, uh, they're kind of getting a sense of chemistry in, you know, how they like to play. Um, you know, you can no longer be a a bingo player or a majority player. You're kind of just playing for the situation. You're playing for the board because there's that 2v2 threat, right? In yeah. a matter of minutes, you could be losing multiple squares. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how these players will respond to, you know, like Bushy here is going to mark his square in, you know, maybe a couple of minutes at most while... Uh, it looks like, you know, Yojo is going to be prepping something in Weeping. Um, it looks like it's an Erdtree avatar, maybe. Um, yeah, sure. not too. Yeah, possibly just setting up Erdtree avatars. It is a center square, so that would make a lot of sense. I'm just grabbing the Grace here uh, for later on uh, for any other Weeping uh, things that he needs to do. There is Sleeping Golem and Weeping as well, so Weeping priority is kind of nice here. We also see Aggie, by the way, already in Halleck Tree. Uh, which I think a lot of people are not used to. Going for that 50k runes that's right here. We talked about, you know, there being money for players. Uh, this is one of those big, big money options is 50,000 in Halleck Tree. Uh, and goes and Memory of Grace is right away. So there's already that mark from Blue Team here from Aggie. Memory of Grace for that 50k grabs that and it immediately does it. So that, that's one of those rushable squares I was talking about. And as you were saying with the, you know... The, the column four being the easiest, or sorry, the row four being the easiest, it obviously is also going to be the easiest to get blocked. Yeah. Right here, we're going to see Bushy marking the two caves in, in Grotto Dungeons. Um, and so now we have both teams on the board, one to one. Yep. And, uh, yeah, like, yeah, we're row four already blocked for both <laughs> teams. It happens in a matter of five minutes. Uh, very, very insane. And it looks like looks Kali. Looks like Aggie's here. having a bit of trouble here. <laughs> yeah, Kali is just not happening. <laughs> Uh, so people have been killing Kale, by the way, because they want to get the, uh, snap fingers, um, gesture without having to do all the dialogue. Uh, so you normally kill Kale for that, uh, since there is summon Blythe for, for, uh, for, uh, Bloodhound Knight. But Kale just not, yeah. 
Kai was like, you know what? I'm going to go open shop somewhere else. Let me let me go <laughs> to a different church instead. This place sucks. Oh, man. I guess I got to be careful. You can only tank like one or two more of those. And uh looks like, okay, CBD just killed uh, Margaret, by the way, here. Going to be prepping possibly for God uh, Godric's Great Rune, as that being in column three here. Uh, for anyone that can't see, I'll hover over it real quick. It's right here. And uh, there is also, also the Yojo four going for uh, the Sleeping Golem right here. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's going to take two square offs for a stun, so it sh shouldn't be too bad. So, yeah, good foresight here from Yojo to, you know, go ahead and take the square off the board. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad of a fight. Oh, does miss the first square off here, though. Uh, but yeah, this is like, uh, yeah, like what we just said before, like this weeping play is actually really good for, for Team Red. Um, already getting priority in some of these squares, which is huge. Okay, we have our first knockdown. That is that is good. My my heart can rest easily now. Yeah, once you have the first knockdown, it honestly is pretty straightforward after that. Uh, yeah, you just go for those two charged R2s and you keep knocking them over. He does have a lot of health is the only thing. Um, but the other thing as well, by the way, there is acquired 10 different talismans. There is a talisman here, which is the Blessed Dew talisman in the chest. Uh, so this that is kind is of true. like a, a little bit of progression towards another square on top of killing the Sleeping Golem, which is really, really nice. Yeah, and uh, CBD here is also at the same time uh, making his way through Stormvale, going to be uh, probably going for that Godric's Great Rune. He could have comboed that with the uh, Dagger's Claws and Fist only, but I don't think he really wanted to look for the, the Claw check in Stormvale. I think he just wants to get the square off the board as soon as possible, which is, you know, that's a very safe play, very smart play yeah. from CBD here. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I'm expecting here to be a uh, honestly a, a fist uh, daggers check as well in a round table. Um, there's gonna be like a really quick and easy one past Alberich if you wanted to do that, anyways. And there we go, a second square already marked from red team here going for that sleeping golem. And it looks like that maybe they were trying to trying to bulldoze that row four, uh, but honestly, a square is a square. You know, if it's easy, you might as well just grab it. So that's really really nice for red team being two to one currently in the lead. Yeah, it, it also looks like CBD is going for the, uh, he was talking to Nefeli Lu there for a second, so I believe he's going for Godric while summoning Nefeli Lu, and uh, that makes the most sense, because you can get two squares there. Yeah. Yep, so yeah, he's going to go straight for that Godric Nefeli Lu into restoring Godric's Great Rune, and it works towards four different remembrances, so he's kind of working towards three squares at the same time here, which is a really good momentum play, I would say, from, from Team Blue. As uh, Aggie here is in Missile Rune, he's going to snap his fingers to get Blythe down. I believe he's also going to grab the Axe Talisman that's uh, in that's inside this ruin. Um, that'll be one towards the Talisman square. Yeah. Well, he just me immediately ports out. He really wants to get this. Um, Doesn't even need it. Yeah, he wants to get this uh, Bloodhound Knight kill as fast as possible. He really did waste a lot of time fighting Kale, so he might as well just like <laughs> rush it as fast as he can. Um, that's and that's going to be a nice square, by the way, uh, on on column five. And that's going to actually promote their column five here, which actually be really, really solid. That might actually be a line that they could go for uh, with Shibiri Grapes and uh, Rise Hand of Volcano Manor. If, if Aggie goes for a Volcano Manor after this, that would be huge. There he goes. He summons Blythe right away, goes for the square off. There's so much already happening on the, on the screen. It's crazy. <laughs> So much square off happening at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, everyone just utilizing square off, which I think is fantastic. It's really showcasing that weapon art. And Cemetery like Shades here for Josh. That is working towards the Catacomb Dungeons, I believe, right? Uh, Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Honestly, and also, I always thought that... Uh, oh, hello there. We got a little lag going on. Let me just go ahead and just, uh, oh, okay, we're good. Just a little bit of lag. That's all good. And there it is. Uh, two squares now for Monkey Ballers, two and two for each team. And we got that nice little progression to column five here for uh, Team Monkey Ballers. They're, yeah, they are definitely in a good spot here. Um, the row four did get blocked, which is fine, because they're then just moving on and promoting that, that column five, obviously. Um, it, that, I think that's actually a solid column to go for because it's kind of playing the long game. Like that one will take maybe 
within the next 20 minutes or so, they're going to force them to respond here. And, and, you know, making one of the players go for Putrid Crystallion or Hayata's Grapes or Raya's Vol Hand of Volcano Manor, that all three of those are kind of like long game squares. So forcing the other team to go for one of those for not much gain is definitely a, a really good play. Yeah. That I see here for Team Monkey Bowler. And, uh, and uh, the nice thing here as well, actually, is that Shabira Grapes is right after Godric, too. So they're yep. already progressing that as well. So, yeah, this is actually, like, a really, really big move, honestly, from CBD. A um, lot of, like, multi-small completion going on uh, from him, which I think is really, really neat. And this this row, too, is developing faster than we could have even expected, because one square ago, it didn't even exist. And now we are looking at a row two and a column five, so... Yeah. Just goes to show how quickly this new format can snowball if you, you know, make the right decisions in the early game. Yeah, Team Blue definitely making the right calls here. I do wonder what Bushy is setting up here. I think he's setting up for take Raya's hand. So he's already trying to block Column 5 here. Currently in Liurnia. Um, I think he's doing the, the Bach quest. Not Sorry, not the Bach quest. The, uh, the, the Bogart quest on top of that. Uh, since we do have Bogart, that's actually like a really good, nice little uh, two for... Uh, two for square because you have to do the quest line anyways for Raya to activate Bogart. Um, mm. So you get to do two at the same time, which is really nice. Yep. yep. I wonder if they're also looking at this diagonal as well, or at least uh, they're looking at Grail without status effects because that will also give them the dragon hearts, right? For the square. And that'll also, you know, contribute towards a column one as well. So, uh, well, I mean, Grail it wouldn't work because Grail is technically not a boss; doesn't have a health bar. So the five health, uh, dragon hearts you get from Grail don't count towards that. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, however, that would if that would activate that diagonal a hundred percent, and it would activate column two, which then only has Borealis and uh, Kill Remembrance boss with dagger claws and fists only. So they're kind of moving into their own uh, column here as well if they can get those squares. And they're going to be fighting possibly for a Grail race here at some point. It looks like Aggie is also setting up Raya's quest. Um, so we will see who gets it first. Looks um, like Bushy it's... is already in Altus, though. So he's possibly <laughs> going to be marking this very, very quickly here. Currently at Urtree Grazing. And now Aggie's in Altus. Oh, this is definitely a snipe on the way. Whoever loses this square is not going to feel good. That's for sure. Yeah, a little bit of a time sink. A little bit of a time sink. Here it is, already at the conversation. This is definitely going to be a square for Team Red, a.k.a. Yo, jo, Joe W. Bush. I always get their <laughs> name mixed up. Uh, there it is. There are three for three now on the board for b both teams. Nice block, though, from Red Team. Nice block. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, CBD here heading up the Limgrave Divine Tower for that Godric's Great Rune. Uh, we are going to see how the red team responds to this. Um, I think this is going to be forcing uh, maybe Altus bosses from uh, Bushy if they can get this Godric's Great Rune. I, I don't know exactly what's faster, Grail or Altus, but they're going to have to respond to this eventually. And uh, they can't just let this one sit. I think this one can go pretty quickly. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, Josh, by the way, finishing those catacombs there. So now it's four squares for red team currently. So they're kind of in the lead when it comes to squares. Uh, never mind, just changed uh, about two seconds ago with uh, <laughs> CBD claiming the Godric's Great Rune. That road to really staring red team in the face right now. That's a really, really nice play from blue team. Yeah, I mean, you got to wonder... Like, is it faster? Is it better for them to just bulldoze their own bingos or to block the other bingos, right? Like, that's kind of also a decision to make is when you're on the back foot, you know, you can maybe try to push your own advantages, like, further. Otherwise, you end up spending the rest of the game chasing, right? And that's never a good position to be in. So we'll see how they respond. It'll be very interesting to see. Um, as CBD here is going for the Invader Millicent Square. That will be uh, developing that column four and row one. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is really, really good from CBD. Like I said, he's he's been covering a lot of different squares, which I think is huge. Uh, the thing about row two is that killing seven Altus bosses is a huge time sink. Um, so there is that. Uh, so I think they might just keep that open and kind of keep that as a threat and might try and push for the Grail without status effects. Uh, at least that's what I would be expecting. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, who knows? That, that takes a little bit of setup too. If you don't find Godskin Peeler right away, for example. Yeah, we also have. Uh, we haven't seen Boiled Crab from Boggard. That's also an important square, I think, for both teams because they both obviously have access to the NPC. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see who ends up claiming that square because that could make the difference between Team Red getting a column two threat or, you know, Team Blue getting a row one threat. It's going to be very interesting here. So I, we actually see that uh, Aggie currently now going into uh market fight here so i think he might be prepping for the uh, cl uh cl sorry cl claws daggers or fists only <laughs> i don't know what's going on man i'm having a little bit of a hard time today but uh yeah i think he's kind of prepping for that maybe as a possible block uh that'd be uh a, actually a pretty good play here as well yeah absolutely what like, i am surprised get... by oh sorry go ahead I was gonna say if they can get that and the boiled crab with the runes you get from Godric, that's you know that's already three squares developed for that column two. So that would also be a uh, a very threatening, uh, a very th threatening bingo to obviously be you know exercising your board presence here. Um, like I was saying before, instead of maybe chasing the team blue squares they're also just developing their own and making their own threats so that's also a very interesting thing about the new format is with how quick the games are going teams can play a little bit more on the offensive when they're behind yeah um, so it'd be very interesting to see yeah and there's also this new uh i would say kind of mentality of like okay sometimes the bingo line that they're threatening is really long it's like you know what if they get that line let them have the line let them have the two points we'll go ahead and just do something else instead uh, which I think is a really, really nice uh, change. Instead of being like, oh, I have to, have to, have to, have to block this. I'm going to have to sink all this time right. now into just to block this bingo. It's not like, you know what? You can have that. Have the two extra points. Have that square. That's going to take too much time. I'm going to go for my own line instead. And it becomes more and more of a back and forth than anything else, which I really, really like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks like for weapons, I think we're just sticking with Lord Sworn. I don't think anybody is really deviated from that. I think we're just going Smithing Stone for the uh, upgrade path here. Also, there's not really an incentive to go for a somber weapon anyway. And also, Square Off is just an amazing Ash of War. So, I think we're just going to go Smithing Stone here, and that's going to make so that's going to make bosses a, a tiny bit slower because I think plus nine Smithing may, uh, can just bulldoze like everything, right? Um, so boss fights are going to be a little bit slower, which is probably why we're not seeing Altus bosses. Like, let's say there is a Somber 9 square that may have potentially incentivized Altus bosses. Um, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously you can just, like, mow through them with a, um, upgraded Somber weapon. Um, that's also another thing to consider as well. Yeah. Yeah, I also wonder, I don't think, uh, I'm assuming they've already checked, uh, the Twin Maidens, uh, merchant and just didn't have any good weapon options there. Uh, so just stick with the Lord Sword, I think is completely fair. Um, you, you do as many merchant checks as you can for different weapons, uh, but sometimes you just gotta call it and be like, you know what, this is the best I can get. I'm gonna go for it. I looks like Josh actually died here uh, with some money. I, uh, he's gonna go for the smithing upgrades, like you said. You're gonna stick with that uh, Lord Sword and Straight Sword, which I think is a good call. Grabbing the smithing twos and threes here in Shifra to make sure that he at least has a plus nine uh, weapon uh, to go into some of these fights. It looks like Bushy right now going with Venomous Fangs into uh, Godric. I don't know if they're upgraded at all, but yeah, that that's actually a pretty solid weapon. I would say that maybe Hook Claws are better or Blood on Claws with that bleed, but uh, Venomous Fang here, it applies a, uh, a unique poison. It's called Deadly Poison, and it's actually, it does, I don't know how much more damage exactly, but it's, kind, it's like almost as much as like Rot. Um, so we will be seeing Godric losing health very, very rapidly here with that poison effect. Yeah, and the fist weapons themselves are actually really solid too. The move set's actually really, really nice to use. Um, well, I, say, I would say this is probably one of the best early game weapons you can use for bingo for sure, is, is Venomous. It takes care of a lot of squares very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Bushy a little low here in health though, he gets to heal. Just has to make sure that he doesn't, you know, get tagged again because he doesn't have any red flasks anymore. Doesn't have any golden seeds to upgrade his flask in the early game. Uh, so just has to play very, very carefully here. Yeah, I mean that's just that's just the, the the risk you run when you're when you're playing bingo and you're going for these squares. Like, you know, you can call it rushing, but that they have to, right? Like, yeah. that you can't really invest time into going for flasks. You can't invest time into going for upgrades that are not necessary. So, I mean, like, 
for Bushy here, like, he has to, you know, play on the aggressive here and just go for the square, because he doesn't know maybe somebody else is already working on that, right? So, it just adds to the pressure there. Yeah, I definitely agree. And it looks like that uh, uh, Aggie might be sniped here yet again, by the way, trying to go for uh, Fist, Claws, or Daggers only remembrance as well. Uh, Bushy already almost done with this fight. Uh, one third of the health left on Godric here. And now uh, Josh going for Urtree Avatars. Huge score yeah. off damage, by the way. Yeah, we haven't uh, seen any Urtree Avatars actually ipping the center square. Kind of surprises me, but... yeah. Uh, Center Square kind of loses its value later on in the game, obviously, because, you know, you could develop more and more bingos and whatever. But, you know, if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm Josh here, I don't mind. I don't mind a Center Square developing a uh, a row three uh, and huge square off damage as well with the oh, my God, huge repose as well. I always forget in 1.10, they actually buffed the repose damage. So huge damage coming out from Yojo here. And here it is. That's going to be a square marked here from Bushy in just a moment, killing Godric with uh, Klaus, Daggers, and Fists only. Ag is going to see now they upgraded a weapon that he doesn't even have to use anymore. There it is, marked on the board. Ag, you should see that hopefully here before entering the fight. There it is. Oh, man. A uh, little quiet Jesus Christ coming from Aggie there, noticing that that just got taken from him. Uh, huge snipe here, but here's the thing. CBD is actually currently in Raya Lucaria and is moving towards Red Wolf, possibly Renala, which is going to be a really, really nice block. That's a huge block. That that bottom left square, column one, row five, that's going to block their diagonal option. That's going to block their row five option. Uh, so this is going to be a really, really nice square here for Team Blue if they do get that. Currently five to five in squares. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Renala seems like one of the more time-investing ones because it's not like Otis bosses where, you know, it's time-investing in, in the sense that it's, you know, a, it's a large volume. With Renala, it's a lot of time investment for simply just one objective, right? You don't really get much else out of the Academy, so we don't see players going for this until it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. And uh, CBD here is recognizing, okay, this diagonal is a problem, and we're going to take care of that right now. And, you know, also... One more for majority, you know, I would never complain about that as well. Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely agree. And a really nice fight here. Gets a, the rare Red Wolf Stagger here from CBD. Gets a nice repose that should kill. Huge repose damage. Very, very nice. Um, that's going to be a nice progression here towards the Ranala Square. It also looks like, I think, who has the lead of the remembrances right now? I think everybody has Godric, right? That is the, uh, the current play for remembrances i saw yojo was down in the underground area but i don't believe the first regal ancestor counts as a remembrance boss but if there were an underground square i think the deer would be a good option but in this game i don't really know which remembrances are highest priority obviously we have renala for cbd here um that's that that would be two for him because he's already done godric yeah um but i don't really know what are the next fastest remembrances to be honest with this board um, yeah, I'm not too certain. I know Josh still actually has... Josh is the only one that hasn't done Godric. Actually, Josh and Aggie both haven't done Godric. Uh, I mean, Aggie just entered and immediately quit out as soon as he saw that square being marked. So they at least have still that open. But uh, the next fastest one after that would probably have to be, I would say, probably Radon. Because you can go straight to Altus, mark a Grace, and then go straight back to Kayla, enter Ionia Grace, and then run to uh, Radon. You don't have to do Red Wolf. Right. You don't have to do a two-phase boss fight with Renala. It's a one-phase boss fight. You get it done with. And uh, I, I would say that's the second uh, fastest remembrance. Otherwise, like I said, Millennia. I know it's a long fight, but the Grace <laughs> is right there. It's outside the door. You know what I mean? So you do have that option as well. Um, I would say Riker is probably one of the longer ones now in this season. Yeah, I mean, and if you're CBD, you know that. So if you're CBD, you, you know that you have priority on Great Runes. So you can just sit on two. Or sorry, not Great Runes. Remember, you can just sit on two um, going into the Renala fight here. He has to wait until Renala casts all four summons. This is one of the more difficult squares, I would say. Although he did <laughs> invest some into HP because Renala is so volatile with those summons. Obviously, if you're going to stick around the fight with them... 
the dragon comes out, the wolves come out, the Bloodhound Knight comes out. It's mm-hmm. it's quite a mess for Renala. But uh, CBD here, you know, activating that Godric's Great Rune, leveled some HP, playing the long game, playing it smart. You love to see it. And, the, uh, and it, like we mentioned, this sword putting in so much work. Absolutely. You cannot stagger Renala in this first phase, but even still, the R1s are just dishing out damage. Yeah. I don't even know what upgrade level it is, but it's it's doing the job. It's getting the job done. And for anyone that's currently on Renala and having a hard time uh, trying to get some early damage in, that first laser, uh, this is a tall lady, guys. All right, She's about 12 feet tall, and uh, when she does her laser, it goes above your head if you're standing right next to her. So you don't have to roll or anything. As soon as you run up to her, it's just going to go right above your head. You can go ahead and just do an attack, and uh, then you just go ahead and uh, do another square off, like just the way CBD did it, and you get a free punish. It's it's a very, very uh, nice way of going about the fight. We're getting a uh, dragon first, which is kind of rare. I don't really see dragon first very much, but like luckily he avoids here. the dragon. Dogs. Uh, while it looks, it looks like Aggie is working on Moon of Noxtella, I think? Yes. Um... Yeah, Grabbing the somber stones on top of that. While I believe Yojo is finishing up avatars. Oh, whoops! Hold on. So we kind of have three different, like three different squares being worked on here, and I think we have yes, Urtree avatars are done and dusted for Josh. Very, very nice. Yeah. So Bushy, by the way, went back and grabbed those uh, twenty bald crabs from Bogart there. So now currently. Uh, Joe W. Bush currently in the lead, uh, seven squares to five, and having that column two, like really, really strong presence column two. Like I was talking about that before, when we saw that, you know, that this is actually a really, really doable uh, line for them. Uh, really nice fight here from CBD. Does get all four summons, and goes for the kill. Going to be able to block that row five at the very least, and that diagonal progression. Very and nice. And now he has, he also has prior one remembrances now, like we said before. So. Yep. I think he knows this. I don't think any other Remembrance is being prioritized here. Honestly. I can't see it. Because uh, now that you see uh, the... It was very, very early when Godric was killed with Nefeli Liu. I think if you see that, you kind of concede a little bit that square. Um, because Four Remembrances is definitely the long game. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's not something that you just go for when you see someone get a Remembrance, right? You don't, you don't try to race them to Remembrance bosses. Unless you absolutely necessarily have to. But, yeah, normally right. you're just like, all right, you know what? That's really long. I'll just let you do that. And uh, Aggie here claiming Moon of Noxtella does snipe Bushy here as he's currently on his way there himself. Does pour it out immediately as soon as he sees that square being Ooh. marked by Aggie here. So currently 7-7 seven to seven now uh, for both teams. Very huge. Still tied 7-7. Seven to seven. This is actually insane how, how close this match is. Yeah, it looks like Bushy was thinking of a new play because he got sniped. Um, we'll see what he's going for now. As uh, it looks like Aggie doing a little bit of shopping here. Oh, going for Stone Sword Keys. Okay, I see. They really, really need to look at that Grail without Sass Effects. That's a huge square for both teams. It's either going to promote Column 2 for Red Team or it's going to promote Row 2 for Blue Team. So they someone's got to make a choice here at some point. It looks like everyone's going for upgrades just to make sure they can deal with Grail. Uh, to be yeah. honest, because uh, that is a little bit of an annoying fight. Uh, well, fight by killing five dragons. Um, but no one's done a God's Peel- is Godskin's Peeler check, which I'm a little surprised by. There is a Twin Blade here. We can do the, the very rare uh, moment here of bringing... Oh, hold on a second. Hello? Oh, Hello. there we go. Okay, I just lagged a little bit on my end here. But uh, here we go. The map, ladies and gentlemen, the map is back. And uh, here we go, by the way. We're going to head move over here real quick. And there's a got, there's a nice little check here that a lot of players don't do. Nice little check here that I was hoping to see for Grail anyways. is in the ruins right here. There is a, uh, uh, a Twin Blade check. And there's like a 20% chance that you can get Godskin Peeler, which has the Black Flame weapon art. That takes care of Grail immediately. Very, yeah, very that, quick that- move. It's also very good if you're going to be using the trap chest to go to Kaelin. Um, it's, like, literally right there on the way. Um, I don't think... I haven't timed Inner Aeonia, but it seems like uh, it's a little bit faster. But, you know, maybe if you have, like, a Celia Tunnel Square, that's a huge power play there. Grabbing that Twin Blade check and then just heading right on over to Celia Crystal Tunnel. That's a huge power play. Yeah. No, I agree. That's, that's definitely uh, another angle as well. It looks like Aggie here, by the way, uh, currently going for the Unique Seals. 
It looks like he's possibly racing someone here on red team. They also marked that uh, one to one currently on seals, so they this might also be having be a race. Tree spirits, right? True. Yeah. But I'm really wondering why they're all focusing on that and not seeing the Grail Square. Why is the Grail Square not being prioritized? Dude, that's a huge, huge square for both teams, and yet they're still they're doing other squares on, instead. I'm I'm really surprised by that. Looks like Aggie currently here in Stormvale, by the way, going to go for the, uh, I'm assuming the, uh, the God Slayer seal. Yep. Which is a little bit backwards. You need, you need one Storm Soul Key, I think, for, for that one. And it looks like, uh, I don't know which weapon CBD is going for, but he did just spend a bunch of time grabbing Somber Stones. So I wonder what CBD's plan here is here. I think he might be going for Grail. That would be my guess. Um, kind of threatening that row two a little bit more. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it looks like, is Bushy going for seals as well? Because he did buy the finger seal from the, uh, the maiden there, also picking up stone sword keys. Yeah, it looks like it, because there is two on two for right now for the collect five unique seals for both players. So it looks like that we're having another race on another seals. Another race. <laughs> and Bushy, yeah, going straight for that God Slayer seal the same way Aggie is right now. They're kind of like in, uh, in Senka here, I would say. And it looks like Yojo is working towards uh, Hayata, I think. He uh, he set up the quest earlier, and then he just grabbed the, uh, the grape from after Godric. So it looks yeah. like he's going for that. He's setting that up right now. Um, pretty smart play here. Uh, it's 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 a little bit of a time sink. I will say it's probably a couple minutes when you you know factor in the, the warping, the dialogue, and whatnot. But uh, definitely a good play here. What is interesting... To... Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to, it's going to develop that row three a little bit more. Yeah, um, no, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I think they're kind of possibly ignoring column two and are like prioritizing uh, row three instead uh, with the seals and the Shabiri grapes. But I'm really wondering why, like why, why are they not going for grail? I, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely just surprised uh, because the dragons that you have to kill for grail have all the same moveset. Yes, you're able to get one shot by them, but if you do know the fight, it's not that bad. It really isn't. So I'm, I'm very surprised that they're like, you know what? Screw Grail, even though it could be devastating to row two, you know, having blue team get that row two. Let's just go for row three instead. I think that's just a, that's just a little, I don't know, that's a little, a little bit of crazy play, but I, I like it. Yeah. Uh, CB, CBD here is finishing his setup, I believe. He is in the Old Altus Tunnel grabbing that somber four, five, and six, I believe. That's available here. Yep. Um, and it also looks like at the same time, Bushy is going for Tree Spirits, I believe. Also I think with the Dragon Communion Seal. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going for the Dragon Communion Seal here first. But right now, four to four here on Seals. This is going to be Bushy's last Seal. I think he might actually get this before Aggie if he gets there in time and doesn't die to the guy that drops it, the, uh, the good old ghosty boy uh, that is protecting the Seal. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, another thing to consider is, like, yes, you can quit out at any moment, but a quit out could make or break a square. So, you know, when you see, like, these players warping around and, you know, like, Josh here, for example, doing the quest line, you have to take in into consideration these are real-time races. They are not in-game time, right? So every quit out could be detrimental. So if Bushy here makes a mistake and has to quit out, let's say the, the chariot gets, you know, a little bit of a lead on him that is going to cost him you know 10 15 seconds of time so you will see him like trying to trying his best to make his way through this uh this you know this grotto without obviously having to quit out at all um looks like he's going to be taking out this gray spirit here yep get that dragon community with that square up ash of war oh still alive by one there it is. That's a square here. Gets Aggie gets sniped yet again with seals. And we'll have to see if he is going to take the time here to take out the tree spirit or if he's just done. I think he's just done. Yeah, that is that is a huge snipe here. So red team now really showing, hey, we've got column two. Hey, we've got row three. You guys can pick. Like, either you go for Borealis or you go for Grail. But uh, we're going to just uh, keep getting these squares. Right now, 8-7 to seven for red team um, in the lead. And, yeah, Josh, as you said, going for those Shabiru Grapes, uh, fighting Edgar here. And uh, this should be another square then for, for red team. So, if anything, right now, Bushy should book it to Borealis. That would give them that nice little bingo line, row three. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it's chaotic even for us that we're just on the outside watching. Imagine being in that situation right now, like making the, those decisions on the fly. Like it's so easy for us to kind of like, you know, use our, our perspective to kind of, you know, sway which would be the right decision for each situation. But you got to remember, these players cannot see the other POVs and all they have is their teammate to communicate yeah. with. So this is very, very impressive from both teams here. Very, yeah. very beautiful play. I agree. Definitely agree. I, I'm really still surprised um, that no one's going for Altus bosses. Uh, or at the like that blue team is not really committing to that road too. I don't know why, but it really just blows my mind. But I, like we'll find out at the post game interview like why both teams are kind of like uh, neglecting the uh, the Grail Square uh, because yeah, Square Off is huge on dragons. Like, it's so strong, so it would have been just fine. And now right, oh right. now oh no now Aggie's going to start doing grapes here. Uh oh, huge sniped yet again. It looks like. Yeah, this is this is tough. This is tough. Going for uh, slinking it more time into a square that he already has no priority on is extremely tough here. Um, so we're going to see CBD here uh, in Celia now. Possibly going for the trio? Or maybe just prepping a little bit maybe. more. Could he be heading towards Grail here? Or do you think it he's not ready yet for that? Not sure, but there is that square market again here from Josh getting the Shibiri Grapes. Aggie looking over. Sniped <laughs> again. This guy has been sniped three times today already, and it's his first match. Uh, that is just a rough one and a half for sure. Uh, possibly even four times, apparently. That's that's just that's a rough. Yeah, day. it looks like we're seeing a Celia skip here. You got to you got to wonder if this is uh, this is Grail, right? This has to be Grail. It's either Grail or Trio. I mean, either way, you're you're prepping both. I would say with with this Celia Town skip. I see. Uh, I see. However, CBD having a little bit of hard time getting uh, off the ground here and getting onto that branch. Um, I feel like his camera angle is a little off, but that's just the. Uh, everyone does it differently, though. Like some people don't even use that post; they use a different post. So I don't know. Having a little bit of a little bit of an little incident. Of a, yeah. Currently nine wonder... seven for red team. I wonder if he's going to just give up and light the tower because you only need to light one of the flames to to get past the uh, the seal yeah. in town. And honestly, like honestly, if I'm in a match here and if I'm not confident in my Celia skip, I'm just letting that fire. I I, I don't want to risk it. You know, like losing twenty plus seconds on a skip that maybe saves like ten. Right. So, I don't know. Yeah. I would say cut your losses here, light the flame, and uh... oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I feel Almost bad for. I under, I completely understand the frustration that is trying to pull off Celia Town skip. Sometimes it is so infuriating. It is very finicky. It is very very finicky. I will say. Yep. And here you have now one of the mages kind of like being annoyed that the CBD is uh, causing too much noise in Celia Town, uh, kind of uh, trying to get him out of the area. Oh, it looks like CBD is on the branch. There we go. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, it looks like Josh is going to go for here for Dragonheart bosses now. I think red team here is like, okay, we're going to keep threatening bingo lines, but never actually complete them. Bushi oh, yeah, I think in, uh, in Altus and Josh uh, currently doing dragon bosses. Uh, no one's going for Grail here on red team or Borealis. I think their, their game plan going into this game must have been to kind of spread themselves wide on the board and then kind of pick and choose which... Which bingo lines make the most sense, or you know, just in general, which squares kind of fit the situation best? I think it's a good game plan here because they have been gaining ground ever since they fell behind in the early game. I feel like they've definitely made up their you know their ground. Um, so it's been cool to see, you know, a little bit different of a style of play than you know traditional bingo, where it's all about blocking bingos and it's all about you know square priority and whatever. And they just chose to carve their own path, which was a, a really cool play from them. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Josh there getting the kill on a Gil here. That's his first Dragonheart boss. Aggie currently in Altus. I think he's doing Altus bosses and CBD now on Grail. Finally, so I, we're I think see they're the I think they're committing for that road too. I, I think they're finally committing to that road too. Yeah, I think it's time. Um, they've definitely gave up some ground, and I think this is their call of just saying, okay, let's just do this, and then maybe we can pivot into. Um, 
let's say, you know, uh, CVD can go and do putrid trio afterwards. Let's say if, you know, one of the squares gets sniped, um, he's right there in proximity. There's also Everjails, Tree Spirits. There's plenty of things they can go and do. So yep. I don't see a problem here going for this row two, even if it gets sniped. And uh, Bushy currently actually also doing an Altus boss here, going for the uh, double tree, uh, double trio, the uh, double Crystallians, possibly just prepping for the weapon or just uh, generally going for seven Altus bosses, maybe going for that block. Yep. But uh, yeah, nice bo uh, nice dragon fights here from CBD as well, by the way, on Grail, uh, and a dragon fight here from B uh, Bushy, Jesus, uh, from Josh uh, on Smarag. So a lot of fights yeah. going on at the same time. Everyone's literally fighting something at the same time. That's crazy. There's so much action going on right now. <laughs> so much. So much square off, and then one Razax in the corner. And there we go. Nice little stagger here from Josh. And again on Smarag. One of the more annoying bosses, but look at that square off damage. Absolutely beautiful square off damage there. Takes it out. That's the second Dragonheart boss. Going to go for Magmorm here, I would assume. Yeah, going straight to Inner Dragon Heart. Yep. 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 And uh, CBD here and Aggie currently getting their boss fights completed. Aggie killing that Onyx Lord um, for one of his Altus bosses. And CBD, I think, believe on his third dragon. Knocks yes, it down. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Gets the Insta Repose. That should be fine. Should be able to kill it there. Uh, one more jumping R2 should do it. Oh, no, he's dead. Okay, very nice. So he's, he's definitely got the fight down. This is why that's what I was saying. Like, why didn't you just do this just a, a tad sooner? Because now you have way more pressure on your neck to get this row two done. They they could have right. they could have done this a little bit sooner for sure. But I do understand the the Ronaldo block the CBD went for though. That that diagonal row five block made a lot of sense. That did cost a lot of time for him. He has to kill one more dragon here, and they can just bop the head of Grail, and they should be done with. That and uh, then hopefully they can get that road to bingo. <clears throat> yeah, it would be nice to see um, a bingo in the first match. That'd be that'd be really cool to see. Um, it looks like we have Josh you're running towards the magma worm. Bushy is under tree Castle Stormville working on tree spirits. Yep, uh, that will be a nice square to go for. I don't know why he didn't go for the tree spirit in the where the dragon communion seal was that's interesting to me maybe he wanted to get that seal done as quick as possible and then warp away either way we're in the uh, tree spirit fight as aggie here looks like he's heading in for another altus boss but he lacks the stone sword keys oh this is no. not good for aggie and it looks like his game crashed this game freaked out i think there that was weird I think you got the bug. If you can, if you quit out frame perfect on a death animation, your game will like hard lock. It's really weird. CBD did get that Grail kill. That's huge. Now he's going for Borealis here on top of that to block that uh, that road three from Red Team, going for blocks over and over. Really nice moves here from CBD. Absolutely, yeah. CBD has been on fire this match. Josh here. I'm not sure exactly what Josh is. Oh, Josh is going for that Magma Worm. Correct, correct, right, right, right. And now Bushy actually in Mountaintops. Went away from Tree Spirits. Got that one Tree Spirit and is going for Borealis as well now. This might be a Borealis race between Bushy and CBD. Yeah, I mean, I would I would give the uh, upper hand to CBD here just because he has that extra health. Um, Borealis is a very, very dangerous boss to fight very very resistant to well, pretty much every form of damage i'd give a slight edge cbd here but we will see um i don't want to cast a kristen as yojo here is heading into the magma worm i believe that'll be his last dragon heart yes this would be his last dragon heart that's correct yeah and cbd i mean he does have the roses axe as well he doesn't use the lord's run straight sword anymore so he should have a more a bit more damage output so this should definitely be in cbd's favor that's definitely some decent damage on his screen there uh, that's his first just jumping R1, I believe. Uh, Bushy going into the fight now as well. This fight is not too horrible. I know a lot of people don't like Borealis because he yells and screams. But look at that damage. That's some decent damage. That's definitely some decent damage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think 
the magic damage is doing much better than I think what the Lords of Searcher would be doing. And we're actually going to see yeah. Bushy's damage as well in a second here. Nice stagger um, here as well from CBD. Very nice. Huge. Give nice headshot bop. damage. Yeah. Could have had a little bit more time on that head uh, headshot damage, to be honest. But uh, goes for that nice repost. And uh, has got to be careful here because Boreas will be doing that scream attack uh, at uh, less than half health. So he's got to be really careful here not to get tagged by it. Oh my god, and then the damage output from Bushy. You can see the complete opposite oh end of the, the Borealis spectrum. Yep. Yep. Definitely huge advantage here for CBD. And gets the knockdown. This is definitely a square for CBD here. Oh my lord. Very wow. huge damage difference. For sure. Wow. Yeah, that's that magic damage right there. And just being an upgraded Somber, right? So. That's that feels lags, man, over here. I just, <laughs> currently, just streams kind of like losing their mind for a moment there. Yeah, that was a huge square from CBD. Nice snipe to, from Bushy grabbing that. And Bushy might be grabbing the bell bearing here for a Somber 5 and 6. Save himself a little bit of time. I think it's a good move. Uh, go for yeah, maybe a Somber weapon bad. now. Yeah, absolutely. Josh currently on that Magma Worm. Should be getting that kill here very soon. Aggie going for upgrades as well now. I think everyone's just realizing, you know what? We, like We're getting to squares now where we just need stronger weapons. I might as well just you know commit to it. And there it is, that square, though, for uh, Josh... The Dragonheart bosses. So that is now 10-9 to 9 currently for Joe W. Bush, uh, which is uh, insane. They're, they're currently still in the lead by one square. However, yeah. Blue Team still has that seven Altus bosses square open and that bingo line open. That's still a really, really big one. That's going to be contested by both teams now, I, I guarantee it. Yeah. So the question is, if you are Bushy, are you going to finish your Tree Spirits, or are you going for Altus bosses? I don't know who is going to be going for that, but I think Tree Spirits is a decent play here. Send, you know, send Josh on to Altus boss duty, but we will see. We'll see who is uh, sent to do what. Nice little fight here from Aggie, by the way. Gets that Stone Digger troll down with the explosion and the uh, square offs. Another Altus boss form is currently on two Altus bosses. And it looks like Bushy is racing him for Altus bosses now. He's on that Knight's Cav here in uh, Highway Junction. Yeah. And uh, CBD here going for that Peter Crystallian. He's in Kaled. He may as well. He has an insanely high-leveled weapon. He's got a lot of HP. I don't know what his flat situation looks like, but uh, I think Peter, or Peter Crystallian's is uh, kind of a no-brainer here if you're CBD. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I Honestly, if anything, I think they should swap here. Uh, Aggie should not be going for seven Altus bosses because CBD's weapon is so much stronger. He should be bulldozing through bosses right now. He should be doing those back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back while Aggie gets, goes and gets prepped up instead. Um, I know that Aggie already had an Altus boss. And that's probably why he's trying to go for priority on that. But CBD just has way more damage output. He should be doing all these bosses. He should be uh, getting uh, all the uh, seven Altus bosses. And he could easily beat Bushy in that race. I mean, maybe he's doing both. Who knows? I mean, he's currently doing trio. I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a little, little toughy here for sure. Uh, Bushy here now dealing with a dismounted Knight's Calf. Gets a nice little square off to take him out. And uh, Josh here doing Crucible Knights, going for Everjails, it looks like. That top left corner there, uh, row one, column one. All right, looks like actually that Aggie actually just his, uh, switched his weapon. I just saw that there. Bloodhound Fang. I don't know where exactly where he got that from, but that's a huge weapon. If he gets his weapon online, then he'll definitely have uh, some insane damage output as well. He can easily kill Gillica, easily kill Knight's Cav. He can go for Godefroy, like very easily accessible Altus bosses. Um, so if once he gets that weapon online, he should be able to just uh, deal with the rest of this for sure. Yeah, I um I don't know what weapon Bushy plans on using or if he even plans on doing a uh, setup. Looks like he's doing a Gelmir Tree Spirit. Yep. That would be my guess here. Um, but Aggie here has a Blood on Spang upgrade. I think he wins the Altus Bosses Rush because I just don't think the Lord Sworn does the job as well as Bloodhounds would. I, I, I agree. think, yeah, CBD is done here with the Putrid Crystallion. So one Huge. more on the board for Team Blue. Very, very big. 10-10, man. <laughs> this is nuts. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Very close game. Yeah. First game of the season, and it's already a current tie in squares. 10-10 to 10 for both teams. 
Uh, very, very intense. And yeah, as I said, there's that Gillica pickup from Aggie right away. Get that Bloodhound, get that Gillica. That's exactly what you need right now. Yep. Yeah, I think um, with the new format, obviously with the Graces Unlocked, I think not going for an upgraded weapon is... It's, it's really going to hurt you in the long run. As we can see, Bushy are really not doing, oh. you know, very good damage here. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Aggie right there getting a little lucky with that Ash of War. Uh, gets the bleed proc on Gilika as well. Gets that Ritual Sword Talisman. That's a 10% damage bonus, by the way. So that's going to be huge to help him clear these bosses even faster than already he already has a Bloodhound Fang online. So that's going to be really, really nice for him. Bushy, yeah, stuck with that Lord Soren Sword. It's starting to kind of bite him in the butt here. Not really having that damage output that he needs to kind of compete for this Altus boss square. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of late in the game to set up now. That was what you were saying before about, you know, how it's, it's, it's a constant flow. It's like one player goes for squares while the other sets up. And then they switch and, they, and the other player sets up while the other player goes for squares. And I just feel like the... Uh, the you know the teamwork is there. Yojo is there with the with these fast squares, but Bushy never really got time to get set up in this game. It feels like I think he was just constantly chasing after, um, you know, lines of bingo that were being threatened. Right, so yeah, he never really got an opportunity this game. But he takes down most rated tree spirit. That is one more tree spirit and one more Altus boss. Um, we will see how this race goes. Uh, Aggie is starting up the Falling Star Beast. As you can see, Blood on Sveng is not the greatest weapon for a boss like this. It doesn't even really matter, honestly. It's just, it's, you know, it does damage. It gets the job done. Yeah. Just got to be a little careful there with some of those swipe attacks here. It does get some dodges off. Josh here, by the way, doing ever jails currently. Cur uh, for Team Red, it is currently two ever jails to one. And Josh is in his third ever jail here with balls, uh, which is, uh, I would say, one of the meme favorites from Season 2. Okay, uh, caused a lot of incidences uh, <laughs> with his stomp attacks. Uh, but Josh, you're having a really good fight versus Balls. Yeah, and it seems that Bushy is finally making the call. It is time for Tree Spirits to be finished. Obviously, I mean, it's coming down to the wire. Um, he could have grabbed this one earlier, but like I said before, he was probably trying to prioritize seals at the time. So now it's time to take care of that Tree Spirit. Now that it's, you know, down to the wire... Um, We'll see how the end game turns out as CBD is also going for tree spirits, but I think Bushy yep. has him beat on this. So yep. that'll be really huge for uh, Team Joe W. Bush. Yeah, no, uh, this is uh, actually really good for Red Team. Getting the Ever Jails and then getting tree spirits, that's going to put them to 12 squares. And it's going to snipe uh, at least one square here from, from Blue Team. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind, though is if if Aggie gets this, he's the only one currently working on Altus bosses. He has three uh, Altus bosses right done, currently four now with that Falling Star Beast dying there. Um, they will get this bingo line. So they will be at 12 points uh, once uh, Aggie finishes the square. So does Red Team have enough time to get three squares to make up for that bingo line? I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, we have to start working on these talismans, though, because... Uh... Josh is working on Everjails, and Bush is working on Tree Spirits. I think we have to finish the Talismans as quick as possible if there's going to be a win here from Red Team. Oh, yeah, I did miscount. That's actually my bad. Yeah, if he gets the square, it would be actually a win. That's true. Uh, so does uh, Red Team actually beat Aggie uh, with uh, him not getting the square at all? I just miscounted. Quick maths. There it is, another square for Joe W. Bush now, 11 to 10 currently. I guess he'd kill three more Altus bosses, uh, and then this would be a, a, a victory for uh, Team Blue. All right. And it looks like CBD is oh. going to make the call. Yep, uh, CBD does get sniped there on Tree Spirits. 12 to 10 now for Joe W. Bush. If they can get six Talismans before Aggie finishes three Altus bosses, they take the victory here. You got to wonder. You got to wonder how, how, how the end of this game is going to turn out because it's reliant on Aggie's boss knowledge as well as, I believe, is it Yojo working on the Talismans here? Um, yep. Versus how quick these talismans can be acquired. Uh, I think, I don't know how many else bosses we're at. We're at five, right? With a storm face kill. Um, but, yep, this would you be know, five, this yep. boss knowledge could come into play here. Um, oh, you know, you huge could, knockdown. Huge stagger. Yeah, oh. huge, absolutely huge stagger. Bleed proc as well. Yep. 
Very nice. Five bosses now for Aggie here. Currently five to two. Needs two more bosses here. Uh, however, six talismans are needed for Red Team. Now it's only five talismans here for uh, for Josh here is collecting those talismans. Yeah. So we gotta uh, we gotta we gotta keep in mind. Um, you know, these players are routing on the fly. Like they don't. These routes aren't created. Like they're created from match to match. So like this is like, if you're a player in the situation, like it's it's very very tense. You are. It is coming down to the wire. You know, one bad mistake in your routing could cost you the match. So, it's very, very cool to see both of these teams. You know, it looks like they're 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 you know they're they're calm. They're they're collected. Um, yeah. Aggie here making his way through Altus, trying to get these Altus bosses down, while at the same time racing racing against Yojo for the talismans. I I really don't know who has the upper hand here. I'm not too sure either. Currently, Aggie, I think, going for that Sanguine Noble, by the way, and these ruins as one of his other bosses. I think he might go for Godskin Apostle right after that as his next closest Altus boss. But that's going to be at least another two to three minutes. Does Josh have enough time to get these other talismans during these boss fights? Uh, five talismans seems kind of hard. For, He's at seven now. Bosses. He's at seven. Oh. So three more apparently. That's uh, it's it's getting close, dude. I don't know. <laughs> it looks right. like the sanguine noble should go down in. Oh 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 oh. <laughs> okay. Oh oh yeah. Okay. This is bad. It's got to be careful. Okay. You always got to be really careful. That's definitely a very big stall move from Sanguine with that uh, yep. that blood pool, but does get the kill here. Very nice from from Aggie. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's okay. So Josh grabbing that uh, um, the health talisman here from the Weeping Merchant. Did he already buy the two talismans from Roundtable? Because if he hasn't, that would be enough. Huh. One more boss left for Aggie. I think it's going to be Windmill Village. I think he's going for Godskin Apostle here. Okay. It looks like that Josh does not have. Those uh those other talismans, uh, already has those other talismans from round table. So he's at currently at eight talismans. Just needs two more. Going straight to consecrate snowfield here to grab another talisman. Oh, it is not Godsend Apostle. Uh, my mistake. Stone Digger Troll. Yep. So this will be possibly a win for Blue Team. This is a oh no he's going for double Crystallian. Okay, this is this should be a pretty straightforward fight. Bloodhound Fang not doing a lot of damage early on because you have to get the poise break first, but he should be able to just oh, like go, bulldoze man. through this fight. This is the uh, this is it. This is it. Will Aggie take it home for uh, Team Monkey Ballers? Does a little quick little heal up again just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, does Activate get hit that, here. Uh, ritual sword. Gotta be careful here to try and just make sure that he gets those poise uh, attacks in without uh, taking too much damage. He doesn't have a lot of healing. Doesn't have a lot of health either. Breaks the first one. Oh, okay. Josh grabbed money. Wait, hold on a second. Josh grabbed oh. money. He's going to buy the two from round table. Looks like we have... I think he's counting real quick. He doesn't have enough. Grabbing the two Elgin tricksters. Check. Is that nine or is that ten? I think it's. I think he's missing one. Oh, he needs one more. I think. He's missing one. He doesn't know where to go. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You can see his hand smack the yeah, table. The... He's like, I just need <laughs> one more. I just need one As more. As Aggie here breaks the the last crystalline. Uh, I don't know if there is a talisman quickly available in Mountain Tops. Uh. It looks like Aggie here is going to take there it There it is. Marks the bingo line. G G's to Team Monkey Ballers. Wow. What a way to finish it, too. Wow. 12 to 13 for Team Monkey Ballers. Holy. Oh, wow. You couldn't really ask for a better game one, honestly. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. That was oh. insanely close. <laughs> yeah, match one, dude. We are like this isn't even semifinals, finals. Match That's one, like the, with the new two v two format, matches are so exciting. 
it feels like. Yeah. It's so cool. All over the place. All over the place. What a first match. All right. Uh, let me see if the players are available to uh, do a quick little post game. Uh, if I could just type a little faster, that'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like this game, it really was a matter of that synergy, like we were mentioning earlier. Some people are mentioning that Josh accidentally bought the wrong talisman, and that's why they mm -hmm. lost the square. He Ooh, bought really? the spirit summon and not the two trickster talismans. Yeah, there it is. He only bought one of them. Or he didn't have enough money. I'm not sure. That oh, is very tough. Wow. That is that is such a shame. He would have gotten it then. Yeah, he would have gotten it. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's bring in the players. Let's bring in the players. They're all ready. Why? <laughs> so why is your... Sorry, Blanks' forehead is on screen right now. Uh, yo, what up, Aggie? How's it going? What up, yo. CBD? What up, Bushy? What up, yo, Josh? Up? Hi. Welcome in, everyone. Uh, GG's, I'm so man. Upset. I'm so upset. Dude, I, I would oh be just God. as upset. I'm not going to lie. I bought rings instead of talismans. What? No. Yeah, Josh would have the... actually no Josh would have won. Uh Josh yep. and Bushy would have won, but Josh accidentally bought the wrong talus or did bought the wrong item in the shop and so then Aggie got the bingo. I had just I had just oh enough money God. for the talismans and I bought the white cipher ring and blue cipher ring because I thought those <gasps> were the talismans. Oh no. there was also a memory of grace incident. Yep. My memory of grace at the at the carriage to get uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh it's fine. my god. It was it was insanely close, but man, what I'm not gonna lie, what insane first match! Uh, almost exactly an hour. Uh, okay, just quick, at, you know, TLDR, one minute uh, from each team. What do you guys like? How do you guys feel about the match? How do you guys feel about how everything went? So, like, what were you guys aim like aiming for? All that stuff. Uh, t team uh, blue first. Okay, yeah. So, so from my perspective, it was do things and then get sniped ten seconds before you complete them. <laughs> yeah. Three times in a row. Damn. Sounds like skill so, issue. <laughs> yeah, I went. I went for Raya, and then you clicked that as I was like jumping off the horse to talk to her, and then I went for Dagger Claw Fist because I figured you would go for Bogger, and then you went for Dagger Claw Fist, and then I knew you would go for Bogger, so I didn't even bother. So then I <laughs> set up a weapon a little bit and started going for seals, and then you clicked seals as I was going for my fifth seal and then at that point yeah cbd was just carrying the fucking match and we, we we made a gambit that if you guys were doing all that shit you weren't set up to kill borealis yeah so he did grail and then he did borealis while i just worked on altus bosses and was there really a borealis the process of killing borealis it, it wasn't that close but i was killing okay. it yeah, the the damage output honestly between cbd and bushy were uh there was a huge difference for sure like yeah i i, I had a plus 10 yeah, uh, plus 10 uh, Rosa Sacks. Oh, yeah, you, you use the Rosa Sacks, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, yeah, B Bushy still was using that, the Lord Sword and Straight Sword, so there, there was definitely a huge damage difference uh, in, in that regard. So that fight, sadly, uh, didn't didn't go as planned. But uh, all, overall, that, that match was actually insane. There was so much sniping going on. There was uh, just a lot of nice plays. I was surprised, though, why did you guys stall so long, both teams, on the whole Grail without status effects? Because that was on the board for I feel like a little too long for you know either column two and row two, that was uh, available for a very long time. I, it's I not think that it's, easy of a square. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that like yeah. setting up. It's a it can of, be a huge time sink. I mean, you get yeah. one shot no matter what. So. Yeah, that too. Because not only you get, bleh, I can't talk. Not only do you have to have a like a plus nine or something, your health has to be kind of through the roof. For the dragon. Like I would probably do it with a plus ten, but I'm at plus twelve Lord Sorn, and I was like, you know, mm. uh, unless I find a good somber that I want to do it with, I'm not, I'm not gonna go for it. I don't think. There was Bloodhound Swing. <laughs> there sure we, was. Yeah, we didn't find like a single on, good on somber. Oh. That saved the match, honestly. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would, I would definitely agree that that uh, Bloodhound's Fang pickup uh, definitely saved the match for sure. Definitely gave this the speed boost that you needed to get all those bosses in Altus uh, for sure. Um, uh, so any uh, 
Any info from, from Team Red, by the way? I know Team Blue just mentioned everything on their end, but uh, Team Red, any TLDR quick match recap? Uh, uh, it, this was really a fast board. Like, the early game was just a total mess because mm, there, yeah. there was, like, 10 viable rush squares. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like we played it was pretty well. Hectic. <laughs> and I feel like there weren't too many, like, incidents on our end. And... I don't know. I'm I'm actually really happy with how the match went, and ex except for the very end. I to yeah. be, to be fair, Josh, I I got the quit out same frame you die bug, so I lost thirty seconds. <laughs> wow. so we both we That's both funny. got memes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think I still would have had it, but yeah. but yeah. Um, I, I, from commentator's perspective, uh, how far ahead was Aggie on Altus bosses compared to me? Because I I eventually just didn't go for Altus bosses and bet on uh josh getting getting talismans but I'm, I'm assuming he was one or two bosses ahead of me yeah around there uh, i think it was like one to four um at that point when uh when things changed um and that's when aggie then also put blood Hans fang online too so uh, i think the pivot was a good idea for sure because i i think in, in the long run we you would have uh lost that race with with the lord's run straight sword uh in that regard um mm -hmm. but yeah yeah, that, yeah i think it was ahead by like two to three bosses uh, at that point um yeah, man, what an insane match. Not gonna lie. Thank you so much, guys, for for, for, for playing today. And uh, GG's to Blue Team. Uh, we'll see you guys again tomorrow uh, for your second round match. And uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the match, too, even if it, you know. Oh, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. It was All right. Good game. Well awesome. played, guys. GG's. Yeah, GG's. GG's, guys. GG's. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for playing. Later. Yep. All right, Thank bye -bye. you, Domo.